The CEO of Equifax Credit Reporting Agency claims the average credit rating has dropped below 675 points. A study of 20 randomly selected credit scores had an average of 660 points and a standard deviation of 95.3 points. Use a 5% significance level to test the claim that the credit scores are now on average below 675 points. The CEO claims the results are not valid since they came from too small a sample. Is there any merit to his argument? Okay, so first thing I want to do, as always, is to identify what keywords are present. It says to test the claim, right? So use a 5% significance level to test the claim. So we can tell we're doing a hypothesis test. First step then is to identify that claim. Let's do that over here. Okay, so it says a CEO of Equifax credit reporting agency claims the average credit rating has dropped below 675. So he's saying that the average credit rating, mu, is less than 675 points. That's his claim. Okay, once we have the claim, we're going to identify HO and HA. That's our competing pair of hypotheses, right? If the claim has a less than symbol, it's the same as HA, right? Remember, if it has any of the three symbols, less than, greater than, or not equal to, it is HA. Okay, the opposite of that is then going to be our HO. So the opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. So we will put that in there for that. Okay, so now we have the claim, we have our HO and our HA. Our next step after that is to go ahead and list all the data from the problem so that we can plug that into our test stat next. So let's record the data. For a hypothesis test about the mean, the data that we are usually given is N, we'll have X bar, We'll have an S value for standard deviation, and we will have a significance level typically. Remember, it's not given to use 5%. Okay, so we go through the problem now and try to find these values. So it says a study of 20 randomly selected credit scores. So N here is 20. Then it says that uh, 20 randomly selected credit scores had an average of 660 points. So in this case, the average value here is 660. And a standard deviation of 95.3, 95.3. And then a 5% significance level is listed there. So 5% is our significance level. Okay, so in step four, we're gonna take this data and plug it into a test stat. Now, first thing you do, before you go to use a test stat formula is to identify whether you have a large enough sample size to use Z. If it's a small sample size like this one, see this is under 30, we're going to use T instead of Z. So our test stat is now going to be a T test stat. In reality, this doesn't change very much. It's still going to be X bar minus mu sub zero divided by the standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Of course, we'll list S here as our standard deviation, but other than that, the formula doesn't really change. In practice, it's basically the same thing. So X bar is 660. Then we subtract off this value, mu sub zero, and that value comes from HO. Remember that notation lines up, so it tells us to use the number we find there. That's 675. Then divide by S, S is 95.3 and then divide by the square root of n, which is the square root of 20. Okay, so let's plug all that into our calculator and see what we end up with as our final answer. Okay, so we have 660 minus 675. That'll give us a negative 15 on top. Um, we will divide that by 95.3 divided by the square root of 20. And once we do all of that, we end up with the answer minus 0.70 minus 0 0.70. Okay, so with that as our test stat, our next step is going to be to find the critical value to compare this test stat against. We can tell this is a very um, moderate test stat. It's not extreme in any way. In fact, it's real close to zero, or it's close to negative one, but either way, it's not enough to reject HO most likely. Let's go find that out for sure by finding the critical value. That's step five.
Okay, in order to do the critical value, I'd like you to draw the bell curve, right? This time it's a t-test, so we'll put a t number line at the bottom. And what we want to do is indicate whether it's a left tail test, right tail test, or two tail test. We look at HA to determine that. It's a less than symbol. Remember, less than means we're dealing with a left tail test. And this is our rejection region, in other words. If it lands over here, we do not reject. This number here is the number we're looking for when we talk about the critical value, right? We want to know where does this rejection region begin. In order to determine that, we're going to go to our T table and we're going to look up our critical T value. What we're going to look up, since it's a one tail test, we look up alpha. Under, and since it's a T test, we're going to have to go to degrees of freedom, right? 20 take away 1 will give us 19 degrees of freedom. So look up alpha under 19 degrees of freedom. If it had been a two-tailed test, we would look up alpha divided by 2 under 19 degrees of freedom. But this is a one-tailed test, so we just look up alpha, which is 5%. All right, so let's go to the t-table now and get our critical value. Okay, so we're looking at the 0.05 column and 19 degrees of freedom. So there's the 0.05 column. And we're going to go down until we see 19 degrees of freedom. Okay, so we get the answer 1.729. 1.729. Okay, so we get 1.729. Remember, it's on the left, so it's negative 1.729 for our critical value. All right, now step six, we want to form the initial conclusion. All right, in order to form the initial conclusion, we want to plot this test stat on this number line here and see where it lands. See if it lands in the do not reject or if it lands past that on the left and lands in the reject region. Well, it's only minus 0.7, so why it is on the left, well, it is there. It's not far enough to the left to cause us to reject HO. So we're going to conclude that we do not reject HO. Okay, so do not reject HO and therefore do not support HA. Alright, so these go hand in hand. Remember, if you do not reject, you do not support. The question is, which one are we going to use in our wording in this final step, step seven? Well, look here at our claim and realize that our claim is the same as HA, so we should use the phrase that we used here because that's attached to HA. So we're going to say the sample data does not support the CEO CEO's claim. All right, so we're saying that we don't believe that the CEO is correct based on this data. We can't say that this statement is correct, that the mean is less than 675. So, okay, there's an important thing at the end here. It says, the CEO claims the results are not valid since they came from too small a sample. Is there any merit to his argument? Well, in fact, actually, um, in this case, I would say there is some merit to his argument. Normally, that's not true. Normally, you know, uh, a small sample size, you know, he's perfectly valid as long as we're able to reject HO, let's say. But whenever we're not able to reject HO, whenever we fail to reject HO, we do not reject HO, there's always this possibility that um, a more powerful test would have rejected HO. The t-test is not as powerful as the z-test. In other words, it has a more difficult time rejecting the null hypothesis. So the point is here is that perhaps another study with um, a different set of data, perhaps a larger sample size, and that would allow us a larger sample size that would allow us to use the z-test. Perhaps that could cause us to reject HO. However, this wasn't even close, right? I mean, on a z-test, the corresponding critical value for a z-test would have been 1.645, negative 1.645. Now, granted, that's a little closer to our test stat, right? But still, this test stat is, you know, 
very close to one. It's not close enough to that rejection region. You know, if it had been, you know, something like, you know, 1.69, negative 1.69, we might have said, well, gee, under a Z test scenario, we would have been able to reject HO. But um, either way, uh, in this particular scenario, the T test does not allow us to reject HO, so we cannot support the CEO's claim. On the other hand, the CEO does have a valid argument here, this idea that, you know, perhaps because of the small sample size, we were unable to reject HO. Keep in mind, though, that just because the sample size, um, you know, in another problem would be larger, it doesn't mean that we would reject HO. It just means that, you know, it could be due to the fact that the t-test is a weaker test. It doesn't seem like it based on this test stat, though.